Hi, this is Priyanka, and I welcome you all to Student Wednesday webinars. For those of you who are attending for the first time, this is a community initiative by Student Technologies. And as a part of this initiative, we host webinars every alternate Wednesday. We invite experts from a variety of domains who talk on different subjects like front-end technologies, UI UX, mobile apps, media, entrepreneurship, community building, digital marketing, and many more. Today, we will learn about how you can identify the right testing framework based on the nature of your project to deliver high quality products and web applications. We will also discuss what are the pros and cons of different testing frameworks that are very popular these days. I would request all participants to please type in any questions that you have during the presentation so we can take them up in the last 15 minutes of this webinar. I would now like to introduce our speaker for today's webinar. We have with us Ritesh Guru. Ritesh is the Director of Technology at Srijan. He has over 10 years of experience in building, architecting, developing and managing web applications using open source platforms based on the LAMP stack. So while you get hooked on to Ritesh's presentation, don't forget to take this conversation live on Twitter using our hashtag SrijanWW. You can see it on your screen. You can share your thoughts by tagging us in your tweets using our handles at the rate Srijan and using Ritesh's handle at the rate Liotsu. So without taking up any more time, I think we should get started. Ritesh, over to you. Thank you very much, Priyanka. Um, I'm very much pleased in addressing the audience of uh, this group who have taken some time out of their busy schedule uh, to attend this webinar. Um, in the past, I know people have uh, covered a variety of topics uh, from technical to non-technical. In this presentation, I hope to give some insights uh, which would help team to take decision about the important aspect of, of the development cycle, uh, which is testing. Um, my presentation is targeted towards covering some key or the important decision making in choosing those framework. So without wasting, uh, hello all, uh, my name is Ritesh Gurung. I'm as a director of technologies with Srijan. I've been associated with the company since 2006 um, and I have worked across different technologies and across diverse platform from development, uh, solutioning architect, and of course, administering the servers. Um, in our overall experience, one thing I have noticed and which is the most important thing is testing. Um, so this presentation is about how and which particular testing framework one should choose while uh, going through the development cycle. So this is the famous quote from um, the father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi, as he said that an error does not become truth by the reason of multiplied propagation. And nor does the truth become error because nobody will see them. Which essentially means that during uh, the development cycle, right, if we have found different uh, bugs within our development cycle or uh, during the product development, that doesn't mean that the product is buggy. So it may be due to the bad written acceptance criteria or choice of the bad tools for writing those acceptance criteria. And uh, if the product is working fine, that doesn't really mean that there is no bug. So uh, taking these things into consideration, uh, I have come up with some of uh, the things. So I would like to put a disclaimer that uh, this webinar is not about how you should set up your testing framework. And it also doesn't cover how you should write the features. The thoughts which I have expressed in my slides or covered in my slides and the conclusion drawn at the end these are purely based on my personal experience. So um, the agenda for today's 
presentation is um, introduction to framework, the definition of framework, the concept of automated testing, and I have picked up especially these three framework for the comparison, which is Selenium, Casper JS, and Behat. Um, I'll be giving some demo example, and in the end, I can share uh, my personal experience as conclusion. Then we are open for the question and answer session. So, uh, in order to understand the testing frameworks, uh, let's try to understand the anatomy of the skeleton. Uh, so the anatomy of the skeleton, if you observe each of these species, so they have a common set of features which perform a specific task. But it really depends on the skill set of the species, how they utilize these features. So species like the gorilla, chimpanzee, gibbon. So they have a longer upper limb or hand so that they can swing easily, they can climb easily. Whereas human body has a straight backbone which allows them to stand straight. So in the same way, um, the framework are set of generic or the common features bundled together so that they can be extended as per need. So uh, in order to identify the, the key traits of testing framework, uh, so the very first thing which is uh, quite essential is when we are uh, defining the scenario, so we must know what needs to be tested and it should have certain decision pointer in order to verify whether the test was successful or not. So an object oriented approach for the testing from frame, uh, pro programming means it's based on the different scenario. Second is uh, Although the picture is not relevant to what the definition says, but I think it covers the, the main gist of uh, the object-oriented approach, which says that an object is responsible for single test. So like uh, these men can see um, or observe one elephant as, and they have the different interpretation. So, so an object is responsible for performing the different tests, right, in a single uh, go. Um, this is very common thing uh, in software development and also this applies for uh, the testing framework. Uh, most often we try to repeat our task. So let's say if the login functionality is there. So it is not essential that each feature set or the test that we are writing in should cover those things. So it should follow the dry principle, which means uh, we shouldn't repeat. And um, it should be extensible, which means um, I should be able to extend the previously defined functionality, but without modifying the source code. So let's consider an example if I have to extend uh, the the core functions of any language, Java, right? So I, in order to achieve what I want, I really don't have to modify the source of Java, which means I should be able to extend the core functionality and use them as per my need. The next thing is uh, when I'm trying to express or trying to uh, test a scenario, I should be able to define the format for that. That essentially means uh, I should be able to define the source of input and I should be able to define what output should come in. So these are the different traits and of course the important part is the reporting of whatever the things which we have tested, a result of that, as to what are the different test scenarios which were 
successful and which test scenario failed. So which essentially gives me a sort of pointer that um, there could be two reasons for that. First, either my acceptance criteria are not written properly or the functionality which I am trying to cover under my scenario is not defined. Uh, so we have different uh, comparison framework, um, the Selenium grid or Selenium web driver or the Selenium IDE. So these are the three different uh, flavors of Selenium which can be used, uh, Casper.js and Behar. Uh, so all these three frameworks are targeted towards solving a specific need. Yeah. So which we'll cover uh, in our next slides. So um, Selenium web driver. Um, so the site is seleniumhq.org. Uh, it the pure functionality or the pure uh, output from Selenium web driver is that it should automate the browser's experience. Yeah. So what you do with that is uh, you try to automate the web application which needs to be tested and uh, it's not limited to that only. So you can create a robust and uh, browser based regression automation tools, uh, uh, suits, sorry. Um, so these are the different uh, suits. So in, in normal scenario or in development cycle, whenever a new fresh development starts, so you have very few test cases to test. But as and when the development cycle progresses and the more functionalities are added, so at that time, the regression automation becomes need because everything cannot be tested manually so it is essentially a requirement at the end or uh, as the product progresses and you can also scale and distribute the script across many environment which means I can run the same scripts on my Mac system, on my Internet Explorer, or the Windows system, or Linux system. Because uh, it is very essential that the same test scenarios is tested across multiple platform and across multiple browsers. So uh, let's try to understand what are the different uh, pros and cons of WebDriver. So as we see, uh, Selenium WebDriver allows us to automate most of the browsers. It can be integrated with BDD tools like Cucumber and Behat. Uh, there is a large community support which means in case if you are stuck up somewhere, so people, you can post it to the IRC channel, you can post to the forum, and people are very active in answering those queries. It allows to run tests in parallel, which means the same test can be written and it can run in parallel across the multiple platforms. Uh, there are downsides to that, so the maintenance cost is very high because we have to run test in parallel which means for each platform uh, we require a separate hardware and uh, there are 
selenium grid there is a selenium grid which can run the same test across multiple machines and while we are writing the test so it takes um, a while to figure out how to write a code which runs across different browser because every browser has its own set of rules so in case if we have to um, select a particular element so the behavior for that in internet explorer or chrome that may be different in parsing the dom and there is a lack of uh, quick start documentation for beginners to start with so uh, this means that um, the selenium uh, web driver it's uh, it's not easy to find api and there is no a good explanation of all the things which can be done um, and you can uh, of course find the docs on net but you have to dig to get them so where selenium web driver is recommended um, i would recommend where large teams are there and where the test where you want to test cross platform and cross browser functionality so when you have multiple devices to check the desktop mobile laptops ipad so they can have different sets of uh, the browsers so there it is recommended to use selenium web driver next is uh, casper js so with the maturity of the net people have come up with different framework so casper js is sort of uh, the javascript framework so um, it is according to the documentation on casper js uh, site is defined as an open source navigation scripting and testing utility written in javascript for the phantom js webkit which uses the headless or the slimmer js the geeko format and it eases the process of defining uh, the full navigation scenario which provides with a high level of functions and methods for doing common tasks it also helps to define and test the flow it also helps to capture the screenshot during the run of a test so in case if i want to capture a screenshot whenever a test fails as to what was the scenario or what was the condition which failed and at that state what was the state of that page so those things can be uh, captured you can write the functional suits and save them as the j unit xml which means that the output can be consumed by the j unit tests so if we look into the pros and cons um, although this is a sort of you can say the biased opinion but um, i found very less cons as compared to the pros um so let's observe what are the different pros so casper js focuses on testing the functionality and flow it has a good api documentation you can start and install this very quickly and it's very lightweight and easy to set up which means the memory footprints or the amount of resources of your hardware utilization of those are very low 
the only con which I can uh, I could find out during my exploration of uh, Casper JS is the debugging is a bit difficult. I've seen uh, people uh, complaining about the Casper JS API. But I found it incredibly helpful as compared to uh, digging, which I had to do with Selenium. Uh, the tester module makes your pass um, and fails very clear. Uh, the tester API is also very nice to work with. You can uh, also write test in the coffee script or JavaScript. And if you can't figure out how to do what you want to do in Casper.js, you can do it pretty well in JavaScript or the Coffee scripts. There are very helpful uh, guides to get started for the beginners. And I think uh, during our experience, so one of our intern um, who had no experience in programming he started writing some tests using Casper.js. Um, in at least, I think, two weeks of his time investment. So one thing um, which I really liked about Casper.js is uh, it allows you to do headless testing, which is, I think, the best choice. and. Since there is no browser instance which gets initiated, that essentially means the output or the execution of your test will be much faster. So automated test, I know it's um, hard to compare the automated test against the manual testing, especially when you are comparing the, the UI. But I think uh, people have come up with a certain recommendation of using securely, if I'm correct, um, where you can compare the two screenshots. So those are the things which then can be integrated with Casper.js to achieve what um, the, the comparison, the visual comparison that needs to be done. Headless uh, browsing takes less time and minimize the maintenance burden. Because uh, we are not trying to figure out why test didn't work and in certain way in one browser and why did it work in the other browser. So if these are the scenarios, I think people will have much time for the inevitable manual testing and for writing even more cache for JS scripts. So uh, for those of you who want to try cache for JS uh, but would rather ease into it from Selenium's easy to see web driver, I would recommend your scripts in uh, cache for JS. Uh, while Casper.js uh, doesn't have quite as wide an adoption as Selenium, so there are already a lot of uh, great open source tools to help you a lot cool things. There are uh, work that incorporate Casper.js with Mocha, Grunt, Gulp, uh, black box testing, and it can also be used as a tool for the continuous integration. Now, uh, since this is a headless implementation, so headless uh, browsing is sometimes intimidating, so which means debugging is not incredibly fun to do with uh, when you really can't see the, what your code is doing in the browser. So 
I think Casper JS debug mode combined with its method to capture the screenshot are good substitute in my personal opinion. Um, you can use it for the easier debugging. So, um, so my recommendation of use where to use Casper JS is in a small team um, who want to test quickly where functionality is the main focus instead of cross browser compatibility. So um, which means where the output or the functionality of one product is essential rather than checking it on cross platform across multiple browsers. The next tool uh, which we have chosen is uh, Behat. Although Behat is very uh, PHP specific, which means uh, that you have to install PHP in order to use the power of Behat. Um, so it's an open source uh, behavioral driven development framework which is written in PHP and, and in the back end Symfony is there, powered by Symfony. Um, so the idea of Behat came from uh, one of the famous framework Cucumber. Um, this idea is to start writing the human readable sentence that can describe a feature um, of an application how it should work and then only implement this behavior in the software. Um, so let's look at what are the different pros and cons of using Behat. So Behat automates the conversation which you have with your stakeholders. You can write the acceptance test it has a good integration with Selenium. It allows you to do a block, uh, black box testing. Even uh, you can invite business users to define uh, the case scenarios. Which essentially means that the stakeholder or people who really don't have an understanding of the development so they can also define those test scenarios. Of course uh, there are certain syntax which people have to be aware about. In a typical way the syntax is given on certain feature set. You define certain scenarios and then the design for those scenarios. So if I have to give an example, so let's consider an example of login. So a test can be defined or the scenario can be defined as an admin. When I click on login button, I should be able to view username and password. So this is as simple as writing this. So the cons of using the hat is the badly written acceptance criteria which will uh, add to the unnecessary stack of code. Also poorly structured automated test scenarios which adds to the overall execution time of the hat or the test scenarios. <coughs> Sorry. Now where the hat should be used? So if your product manager or non-developers read and run your test, this is probably the best choice that you can have. 
I have seen people from non-technical background who are key stakeholders of a product participating in writing those test scenarios which essentially means when they execute those tests they see what they have entered as test suits so my conclusion is that there are numerous framework which are available to automate this the key thing to consider is what is your team size how much resources are you going to put for a project if the need is cross browser testing or multiple platform needs to be tested in also it depends on the comfort level of the qa guys whether they would be investing time in learning the new language so these are the key decision points which one should consider while choosing the framework and as i have said selenium is driver best suits when your team size is big and cross browser across multiple platform needs to be tested in casper js and you quickly want to test the functional flow of your project and certain regression tests behat on other hand is recommended when you want the non technical person to get involved in defining those test scenarios or the acceptance criteria so um i'll quickly take some time in explaining or giving a sort of a brief demo as to what these platform does so let me uh, start with a very uh, simple example i'm just sharing my changing my screen let me know uh, if when it's visible yeah so if you can just see my screen this is one of the example of casper js mm -hmm. Ritesh, hi. Uh, I believe there is a slight lag in the presentation, as everybody may be able to notice. So yeah, I think now we we can see the Casper JS uh, window. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Casper JS syntax are pretty simple. So I have some sample scripts, which are clearly written in some. javascript format so if i have see um in this particular script what we are doing is essentially creating an instance of casper then we are starting our browser the headless browser of course with a site called http casperjs.org and then what we are going to do is we are simply going to get the title of that in the same way we are opening phantomjs.org and getting a title of that and at the end we are just running that script so let's see what is the output of that
So as and when we run the script, it hits the browser, it opens the site, and then it tries to get the title for that. So if you see, the very first one is Casper.js, and it is, uh, the title is the Casper.js, a navigation script testing utility for PhantomJS and SlimmerJS. The result of the second one is PhantomJS, and essentially the title is PhantomJS. Now let's try to add, um, or let me change one of the scenario wherein I can just add or just alter the URL. And let's observe the result of this. Now you can see the title has changed because our source has changed. In the second example, so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to hit the Google search engine with certain keywords and try to identify the different link as a search result. So this is the script, the source for that script. We have defined uh, the object for the Casper.js and defined function get links with certain uh, document selector. And then we are starting with google.in and in the search action what we are adding is the query. Then we are hitting other URL, the search, and then uh, querying for Sijin Wednesday webinar. As and when we run this, we try to get the links and then echo the links. So if we run this script, So you can see there are 10 links found for that, the very first one, and it has come up with these recommendation that these are the 10 links. So this is how the normal Casper.js works. And I think my experience in using Casper.js is that it's very handy. Everyone can, uh, who has a bit of understanding about the JavaScript can easily write the Casper JS script, and it since it it runs headless, so it really doesn't have a sort of dependency on whether it's running on a Windows machine, a Linux machine, or a Mac. The second example is related to the hat. So. Typically, the Behat format looks like this, the YAML file. So where we have feature context, it's very specific to, I think, Drupal. But what we are doing is we are doing a black box testing, wherein the features are defined in this. Yeah. So in order to run Behat test, so we simply have to write Behat. Now if you observe this screen carefully, what it is doing is it is hitting this URL and it is trying to press this login button. And it is expecting that the it should get an error message 
password field. Now since the error message selector, it was not able to find that, so it resulted in an error or the exception was given. So this is how typically the hack works. Now again, if you observe the scenarios which are written, it's very much easy for a product manager or the stakeholder to understand what is the feature that we are testing, what are the different scenarios, and how those scenarios are being tested. So this is all about the hack. So, um, so that that's all I have to share uh, about uh, the test frameworks, and I think um, it's very essential for people to understand the framework when, why, and where they should be used. And these three key pointers are the decision maker for using different type of framework. Now as and when the web will evolve more, so we will certainly find more and more frameworks that will come into picture. And there are SaaS based solutions like Sauce Lab which allows you to put in your scripts to test across multiple platform or across multiple browsers. So those are the things that can be tested in case if you don't want to bear the cost of the hardware or maintain hardware. So that was all from my side. Uh, I think now I'm open to the question and answer questions people might have. Yeah, thank you so much, Ritesh. That was a great session. And thank you again for sharing all these valuable insights and showing us examples of these different theming frameworks. Moving on, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Please press the raise hand button on your control panel if you want to ask your question using your microphone. Or you can type your questions in the chat box below and we'll take them up one by one. Okay. So, yeah, we have our first question here by Shweta who's asking, how about Node.js frameworks? I believe it is in continuation to what you were, you know, just discussing. Is it similar to uh, Casper.js? Uh, I think uh, the Node.js Node framework um, essentially is uh, used when we are doing a sort of a continuous integration wherein as and when uh, you push certain code, you want certain things to be tested. Whereas Casper.js, it's based on, based on the demand. Yeah. So when you want to test certain functionality after completion of that, then only uh, the Casper.js comes into the picture. So um, in Crux, uh, Node.js is good and useful uh, when you want to do a continuous integration testing. All right. Uh, she has a follow-up question. She wants to know, can Casper.js be used for, uh, just give me a second. I think I lost it. Yeah. Can Casper.js be used for simulating load test? Yes, it can be used for simulating load tests also. But essentially that would be uh, an overkill of what uh, Casper.js offers out of the box. Because its main aim is targeted towards testing the flow or the functionality rather than doing the stress testing or the load testing. So for that, we have JMeter. And in case of uh, the load testing, you can also rely on other tools like Siege, Apache benchmarks, like that. 
right uh, just a quick uh, reminder guys before we move on to the next question please take this conversation live by tweeting about us using our hashtag #strijanww and tagging our twitter handle at the rate strijan you can also share your thoughts uh, at our email id by emailing us your feedback at the rate uh, at our email address webinars@strijan.in uh, so uh, i'm just curious ritesh so how do uh, can you just quickly uh, you know walk us through how one goes about deciding you know what framework to use or what are the key points that one should keep in mind or what are the key factors key deciding factors that help you you know take the call that this framework would be best for my uh, project or for for the current scenario yeah um so i think um in my previous slide so when we are choosing a framework so it is very essential to understand uh, the team size the project needs whether you want to do to do testing across multiple platform and across multiple browser and what is the comfort level of the people in various programming language like i said in the very first one the selenium uh, web driver it is very much useful for team where they want to test the cross browser multiple platform and want to write test which can be written in either java or php or ruby so those are the extensibility things um so when you have a very skill set therein the development people can also be involved in uh, writing those test scenarios but uh, when you want to test um, only the functionality part wherein you don't want to go through the pain of testing the same scenario across multiple browser it's just uh, what you really concern is uh, about is uh, the output of that functional test or the flow then you should rely on casper uh, js and behat is useful uh, when you want the product manager or non developers to get involved in writing those test scenarios so so these are the pointers which will help you to uh, judge take a judgment and call on deciding the framework so i hope that uh, answers your query yes thank you so much we'll just quickly take up one last question since now that we are running towards the end of the webinar uh, the next question is can b hat be used for non php based applications of course b hat can be used for uh, non php applications also so consider an example wherein um, we have to do a sort of a black box testing where our only aim is whether we are able to cover all scenarios uh, irrespective of uh, the back end or uh, the language in which it is written so um, so i think um, there is a sort of a call or the judgmental call which uh, every person or the product manager or the team who is involved in that project will have to take if they have people skilled in php and if the team who is involved in writing those uh, test scenarios right the back end for the test scenarios if they are uh, comfortable in writing the php code then they had is the answer for that otherwise uh, if it's only the functionality test then i would recommend casper js all right thank you so much ritesh for answering all the questions very patiently and for leading such a knowledgeable session we are sure that everybody found your presentation very interesting and insightful 
A very big thank you to all the attendees for joining us today. Before we close this session, I would also like to announce that our next webinar titled Drupal 8, saying goodbye to 10 years of theming headaches would be hosted on 5th of August and would be led by Morton Burke, themer consultant, Tag One Consulting, and owner of a Drupal theming shop called the Geek Royal. For registrations and more details, you'd be getting a mail from our site. So stay tuned and thank you again for joining us today.